Welcome back for another episode of the Blue White Illustrated Recruiting Podcast. It is February 13th, Monday after the Super Bowl. Not a lot going on in the recruiting world right now. Of course, it's a dead period. Uh, Sean Fitz and I thought the best way to maybe look at today's podcast is a look back at January. You know, there are a handful of guys that we haven't discussed a whole lot. Uh, so we're going to pick a handful of guys out of that and, and break them all down for you. Let's get it started. Hey, Sean. Hey, Ryan. How are you? Oh, what a game last night, man. I'm doing well. I'd, I'd be doing a little bit better if uh, that holding call didn't ruin the Super Bowl. I don't know. I thought it I thought it kind of ruined what was a great game. But most importantly, what did you what did you smoke yesterday? I, I, I know you you were out there smoking something. I was like actual really meat people in there for a second. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was pork belly and wings yesterday. It was great. Um, little, you know, did, did a few little Philly cheesesteak sliders as well. It's the only thing that we really do to uh, support the birds in this household. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it was, uh, I, I enjoyed the game. I thought it was a very good game. I, it's unfortunate that it came down. It didn't come down to that call. I mean, we're not really talking about the the second half implosion there by the Eagles, which was kind of mm-hmm. a, it had something to do with it, but uh, I didn't like to see, um, I didn't like to see it. Uh, I, I don't like when the, the next day, all we talk about is a call, you know, and it. that's kind of where we found ourselves last year, this year. And uh, it's kind of where it's going. Officiating is very hard to do. Um, but, you know, by the letter of the law, that's a penalty. I didn't like the call personally, but Hey, what am I going to do about it? So, Uh, I'm a Washington fan, so I'm looking at the draft already. (laughs) So that's kind of where I'm standing on this whole situation. I feel bad for you. I feel even worse for Greg. I know he. uh, Greg's the one. Greg's the one, man. We got (laughs) to. We we had to do some well checks on Greg just to make sure he was he was going to make it through uh, (laughs) make it through the weekend. But uh, he did. He was up. He was posting stuff this morning, and uh, happy to happy to see he made it through. So uh, entertaining for me. Uh, Entertaining in terms of like. Smoking meat, drinking beer, and <laughs> kind of where I was at with that. That's what, the, that's what the Super Bowl is all about for a Washington fan. Greg, for you guys that don't know, Greg went to like every playoff game this year. Like he is a devout Eagles fan uh, over at the house every Sunday. You know, it's uh, the whole neighborhood goes over to Pickle's house for for Eagles games. So he, he, he was uh, for that's, uh, that not is. yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a few years, I think that'll change for him. But all right, enough Super Bowl talk. Uh, as I said in the intro, it's a little slow right now, but there was a lot going on in January. And I think a lot of fans know the the names that we really pushed a lot, of course, over the last month and you know on the message boards and things like that. But there are also quite a few names that have kind of gone under the radar. Guys, people questioning whether they're a take or not. You know, where do you stand on the board? Those kind of things. So Sean and I thought that today would be a good good time to look back on some of those guys. Uh, you know, just just give our different impressions, things we've also learned. Uh, since they visited, so uh, Sean, do you, want, do you want me to throw it to you to start? You want me to start? We've kind of all picked different names to to talk about. Uh, wherever you want to go, let's take it. I, I think just talking about the philosophy, like guys, we don't talk enough about. Like it's it's. I like to do this in terms of storylines and stuff like that. So like with the leadership and stuff, and uh, just there there's things that we don't think about that you know you you could go back in hindsight and say, oh, we definitely were we're not talking about this guy enough. But I think. There's always prospects that fit that uh, generality, really. Um, you got just guys that, you know, maybe are a little bit higher on the board than people realize. Maybe they have a little bit more interest than people realize and things like that. So I think that's where the direction we're going with this, because as as you know, I think there's a there's a handful of household names in the class of 2024 for Penn State right now. Um, you, you've got uh, uh, Kevin Haywood has has had a pick in for a long time. Um, you know, Jalen Harvey has had a pick in for a long time and guys have started to you know, make their way into the everyday lexicon of Penn State recruiting. But then there's guys that fall off. There's guys that uh, all of a sudden pop up on visits and things like that. So I think talking about those guys in the scope of maybe we should be talking about these guys more or maybe we just didn't talk about these guys enough in January is the way to go with that. So just filling you in on kind of how we talk about things here um, because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a season of change. February is when the coaches come off the road, they kind of get their reshuffle their deck and get their boards in order. And that's, that's where we're at right now, sort of waiting for those, those, uh, results to come out. But, but for now we see some guys, uh, that visit in January, like hmm, maybe we should have paid a little bit more attention to them. 
Yeah. One guy that pops off to me, I'll go right into it. Kari Jackson, West Bloomfield, 6'1", 215 linebacker. A true Mike, uh, in my opinion, from what I've gathered from Penn State people, I, I think I think he's, he would be a Mike. And, of course, Penn State has Anthony Specco on board. You, you just signed three linebackers. Do you need three linebackers in this upcoming class? That's something that they're going to have to sort out with time. But one thing we saw with Jackson recently is he announced the top seven. Penn State, of course, was included in that. The other six schools, Cincinnati, Maryland, Missouri, Stanford, UCF, Wisconsin. What do you not see there? You don't see the two Michigan schools. Why that is, I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, of course, Penn State has their their guys in state that they don't go after, too. So I'm sure there's a reason or two for that. But from what I've gathered so far, you know, he, he, not, he dropped this top seven. If Kari Jackson calls up Penn State here in the coming weeks and wants to commit, I think they're I think they're they'd be serious about about taking him. Of course, that's a discussion they have to have as a staff. But after that visit, which happened a couple of weeks ago, I I've done some digging on that. And uh, if they if they want to take him or if if he wants to commit, I, I think that it's a serious discussion they'd have. And and that wasn't something I was sure about when he came. So that's kind of why I picked him as, as one of my guys. Uh, let's see where things go. He's talking about taking more visits and things like that as well. So I don't, I don't necessarily believe he's, he's close to committing, but again, with Speckle on board, he's already a Mike. I think that that helps Penn state because they know they still need another linebacker. And then you got a, a Chris Jones or somebody out there too. So uh, keep an eye on Kari Jackson. He was a guy I wasn't exactly sure about, but the more I've talked to people, uh, I think there's a, a real opportunity. He could be part of this class. Yeah, and I don't know that he's a guy that's going to have the window open forever. Like, very good player, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but as you said, he's going to be a middle linebacker. They've got Specca on board. Um, you know, there's, I don't want to say a log jam at that position, but the, if there's, you know, you would rather load up on outside guys than inside guys. So I'm not sure that that window is going to be open forever. I, I look at guys like Jamonte Waller visited in, uh, in in January. That's a guy, I, I mean, he looks great on film. Alabama just offered. Georgia just offered. Um, you could see the Georgia offer coming from a mile away after uh, after Alabama came through. And then Dewan Lane is is an interesting guy to me. Um, fits that safety outside linebacker mold um, from from Gilman down in Baltimore. He's been up uh, once or twice uh, to campus and very quiet. But I, I think he's a guy that's probably higher on the board um, than than we talk about. So going back to Kari Jackson, like, I don't know that it's going to be a situation where they can wait around forever for him. So like you get into the spring, you get into the spring game and all of a sudden things might change there. They just offered Jeremiah Beasley uh, that, that, that same weekend as well uh, in January. So linebacker is, is interesting because Penn state does have leverage there with Specca on board. They can maybe press a little bit, press some buttons here and there and, uh, and see where they're at. And, and, and these positions, excuse me, these positions where you've got guys on board, you've got uh, uh, you got a linebacker, you got an offensive lineman, maybe those boards are a little bit more advanced because of the situation that you're in with numbers uh, in, in, and, you know, you just have uh, a little bit more to play with there. So whereas receiver seems wide open right now, linebacker, you can start to focus in on maybe a few more guys. Okay. Let's another guy on my list, Blake Frazier, offensive lineman out of Austin, Texas. I don't know why anyone would ever want to leave Austin, Texas, personally. But if he did, <laughs> I do think Penn State uh, is a real player there. Six uh, five, uh, I believe, what two sixty ish? Might be a little bit, little bit heavier than that. But uh, good frame, a four star prospect, number one fifty seven in the on three hundred. Look, when Penn State got him on campus a few weeks ago, I saw the Michigan offer. His dad, of course, went to Michigan. Uh, multiple colleagues have Michigan picks in. Felt like. I don't want to say a courtesy visit, but you know Michigan and then everybody else. I don't. I don't really think that anymore. I, I think Penn State's more of a player here than I thought. You know, one thing that I've been told now from multiple people is just that the family is not pushing Michigan nearly as much as I think the media believes that they are. So that'll that'll of course play out with time. Let's see where more of these visits go. Um, but he's a very important uh, prospect for Phil Troutline. He would absolutely be. I mean, this is this is going to be a big offensive line class, I think. I think we could see five-plus guys in this class, if, if it all falls, of course, uh, the way it goes, but uh, or the way they want it to go. But right now, Blake Frazier is somebody that I could see them waiting for. I mean, he's very high on Phil Troutwine's board. There's a lot of uh, potential offensive tackles out there, uh, but he seems to be one of Phil's two, three top guys. And then again, just I don't, I don't believe those Michigan ties uh, to play for his dad's school is nearly as high as what I thought they were a couple weeks ago. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with you there. I I still think probably Michigan has the edge, but but that's mm-hmm. off of familiarity. It's not so much off of 
anybody pushing him there. So um, to get up on campus, I think it sets yourself up to get him back on campus for an official visit. Um, and that's really what you can ask for with a kid from Texas right now is just to, to set up and get, get him back for, for an OV in probably June, I would guess. Um, so then you're probably going against Michigan. You're probably going against another school or two in June and maybe it even some, some things out in that regard. Like I said, I, I don't know that I would pick him to go to Penn state right now, but I think Penn state's probably more in it than we give, we would give him credit for given uh, what is our, his RPM at like 94 for Michigan mm -hmm. or something right now. So I think that I agree with you in that, uh, you know, Penn State is right in this, but uh, I think it's going to take a little bit more. Michigan's a little bit better in terms of recruiting nationally. Um, just uh, you, you look at what they've been able to do in several areas. I think a little bit easier to get to Ann Arbor, um, and that has played into it. Um, maybe not Texas as much as Georgia, Florida, um, even California as well. Um, they've done a, a really good job there, but uh, I think Penn State's got some work to do. But I think they – I agree with you 100%. I think they're right in it. Okay. Chance Wiggins, Sean. What do you think of him, wide receiver out of Virginia? I thought this was another guy who, you know, we've talked so much about Keelan Adams. And, and of course, let's clarify that that Higgins and his board is still something we're going to have to see uh, how it shapes up. But but Wiggins was somebody he was previously recruiting. Uh, Three-star prospect by 0-3, a four-star in the 0-3 consensus. I believe Wiggins put out a top five. I think it was Penn State, uh, North Carolina, Pitt, and then Vatek and West Virginia, I believe it was. So Virginia wasn't even in there, although you know Higgins is gone now. So uh, just another guy that's been up here multiple times. I believe he's visited Penn State four four times now. I, I think it is. And if you look, or no, excuse me, he's been to I think Virginia Tech four times, and then Penn State's a little bit underneath that. So it just it's shaping up to be a Vatek Penn State battle. Where does Higgins board end up narrowing? You know, is he somebody that they push for? I, I think that he would be. And one thing I've also learned kind of recently since his other visit is he's a 4.0 student. And Penn State usually tries to trend toward those guys that care about those things. And, uh, you know, pretty good player on the field as well. Brings uh, brings some size to the board, too. I think he's a legit 6'2 and a half, 6'3 ish, uh, somewhere around 200. So uh, I think Chance Wiggins is another guy out of uh, King George, Virginia, that uh, we may be talking about here more and more in the months ahead compared to what was uh, over the last couple of months. Yeah, I think you're lumping him and, and Keelan Adams together. Um, you know, I think Adams is a little bit higher um, in terms of uh, what he's been able to do on film so far. But Wiggins, there's a lot to like there, too. And uh, as you as you mentioned, some more size to play with uh, 4.0, you know, uh, the the Hagen's connection. I think he was I think he reached out to you and said that they were very high on his list with the Hagen's mm -hmm. move, you know, that, but not that they weren't high on his list before that. So I think uh, this is probably a guy that, you know, all the focus is going to Keelan Adams, but I think Chance Wiggins is certainly in there as well. Be interesting to see where he stands come June. I mean, this is a guy that you want to get on campus and maybe run for you or something like that to see where he stands uh, from an athletic standpoint, or do you just go ahead and host him for an official visit? I think that's a, an interesting play there. As you mentioned, Hagen's board, we're still trying to sort that one out because when a new guy comes in, the board's going to look similar. I mean, it, it, there's only so much out there in the region. So you're going to gravitate toward those guys, but I think Hagen's going to have his own guys as well. So uh, interested to see if, if Wiggins is, is one of those top five, 10 guys that uh, they're on the board, as we know with receivers more interchangeable than others and than other positions. So uh, be interesting to, uh, to follow that one. But uh, Wiggins is a guy that, uh, you know, you could see as the process goes on, more teams uh, falling in love with. Yeah, Wiggins is a guy I haven't been able to find any numbers on. And that that's something I've been looking for. For I think every time I write a story, I try to find numbers on him, and I never do. So it just right. always reminds me. But there is one guy we do have numbers for, who seems to be really rising right now. 2024 running back Peyton Lewis out of Salem, Virginia. Uh, 10, five, four, 100 meter. He ran the 55 meter in 6.39 seconds. And then back in the underclassmen report, I believe he clocked in at like 21, eight, 21, nine, somewhere in that ballpark. And it was one of, if not the best or the highest, uh, miles per hour, uh, that anybody clocked at an underclassmen report camp last year. Of course, he is absolutely blowing up now. Came up to Penn state a few weeks ago, landed an offer from the Nittany Lions, uh, Tennessee, Wisconsin, uh, a few others have verged, I think Virginia, Nebraska, Boston College, Duke, Rutgers, a couple others there. But uh, th this is a guy I'm still learning on, Sean. I haven't I haven't been able to talk to him too much yet. I believe you talked to him briefly. Uh, I know he said, uh, we, we texted a little bit, and I know he said Tennessee, South Carolina, Virginia were a couple of schools he wanted to see in March. And I think those visits are coming up here soon. But uh, Peyton Lewis just seems to be really shooting up a lot of schools' boards right now. And that Penn State running back board for 2024 
you know, there's there's obviously Quentin Martin is is the big name there. Whether he's a running back long term, uh, that's kind of TBD in my eyes still. But uh, there's a lot of guys, a lot of names that have been to Penn State and camped at Penn State. But like, who are those other guys along Quentin Martin? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe Peyton Lewis is going to emerge as one. Yeah, Lewis can scoot, man. And I think his uh, recruitment's probably going to go to an, another level here soon. Uh, you look at, you mentioned some of those schools he wants to get out to. I think he's he might outgrow the Virginias here of the world uh, pretty soon. So. Uh, Penn State, I could see wanting, wanting to get him back for a spring game or just a, another uh, more informal visit before they go through with the uh, with an official visit. Running back is very interesting just as Penn State's gone with a national approach over the last several years. They've had a lot of luck, um, you know, in, in, in certain areas. And uh, of course, Virginia is a spot where they're trying to get stronger. So um, it, it, it's a combination of a couple different things and comes. It seems it seems like it would make sense. Peyton Lewis. Just over six foot, uh, close to one eighty five, um, and he can move. And he's, gonna, I mean, he's a sprinter, so he's going to keep that weight down. Uh, but uh, there's a there's a lot to like about Peyton Lewis as as a guy that's I think going to take that four star jump and then uh, you know continue to move up boards. Uh, it's it's a it's a good situation to be in because there are there are a ton of names on that twenty twenty four running back board. It's just uh, figuring out Jaywan Sider sometimes a little bit uh, <laughs> is a little bit tough because he has so many relationships so many places of course florida he's strong virginia uh he is strong he's you know he recruited that nova to richmond area very well be interesting to see if he can push down toward the beach here a little bit in the 2024 class but uh he's just done so well uh in in forging these relationships and and getting guys interested getting guys to campus as you mentioned that i think it's uh it's a very interesting position to take shape for 2024 because you could see them taking two once again i mean you could you could realistically say that in this era with the, with the transfer portal as it is, you could see that becoming a position where you take two running backs every year because mm-hmm. of the nature of the beast. And there's one ball and there's going to be guys that transfer out of that position. For sure. Okay. Noah Jenkins, another guy I thought we need to talk about a little bit, six foot one and a half, uh, 205 safety out of Highland Spring, Virginia. Noah announced a top five of Penn State, Old Miss, Pitt, South Carolina, and Virginia Tech. Uh, I believe it was either beginning of February, end of January. I think it was like actually a week ago uh, that, that he announced that. So uh, I, I just think when you look at that list, when you look how many times he's been to Penn State, he he's the one who's been here four times now. I mixed him up with Wiggins. Uh, went to Va Tech, South Carolina in January. So three January visits, Penn State, Va Tech, South Carolina. It has a top five, but I think, you know, you just look at the visits there, it, it kind of says something to you on, on who those top three schools probably are. Another guy that I just think we need to figure out where he's at on that safety board. I've struggled so long to figure out Penn State's 2024 defensive backs. Corners becoming a little bit more clear now. A lot of more national guys at corner, I think, than regional this year. Uh, but safety is still kind of confusing to me and something I hope we can figure out here in the next month or so. But uh, is Noah Jenkins a take? I, I I, the more I talk to people, the more I think he realistically is. Just again, seems seems like safety is going to be kind of all over the place nationally as well. So, uh, Sean, just your thoughts. I mean, he's been up here a lot, spoken very highly of the staff. Uh, we'll just got to see where where the cards fall here in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, I think he's probably close to that line. Um, you know, eight, six one and a half, two oh five. So, does that mean you know he started as a corner? You know, we're, we're listing him at safety right now. Is he a linebacker long term? I don't know. Uh, it just depends on how that grows over the next couple of years. So I, I think he loves Penn state. I think he would, uh, you know, if he were pressed to make a decision, I think Penn state would be in a good position, but uh, went to Virginia tech and South Carolina. As you said, I think those three are, you know, with, with Penn state uh, on the Eastern seaboard, I think those three are going to be mentioned a lot um, in terms of prospects in that Virginia area, because there's no really planting your flag at a home base down, down in, down in his region. So I'll be interested to see which direction he takes it over the next couple of months. And I, and again, I, I just, as we mentioned with, uh, with the linebacker early, if he is a linebacker, wh- where does that put him? You know, is he better off just uh, showing that he's a safety showing that he can run at that position back there? And maybe the safety board's a little bit thinner. I don't know. It's a, it, it's tough to say because the the coaches have seen his frame up close. We have not. Um, so projecting him to a, to a position for the next couple of years is uh, a little bit dicey at this point, but uh, do think the interest has shown, you said four visits to Penn state. So it's uh, pretty indicative of him being uh, very intrigued by what Penn state has to offer. Okay. Before we do our last two guys, 
Please remember to like the video. Do it for T. Frank. He is hell bent on getting above 10,000 subscribers for our page. So uh, obviously like the video, subscribe as well. $29.99 for Blue White Illustrated right now to the end of or to the start of the 2023 season. Uh, Sean and I will do our best in March and April to make make sure uh, every cent of that is well worth it when recruiting picks up again. Okay, two more guys, both offensive linemen that I picked. Uh, again, as I said earlier with Blake Frazier. I think this is going to be a big offensive line class. When you just look down the board, you know who has gone. Uh, you have a couple other younger guys like uh, Golden Shuba, for example, or not younger guys, uh, Golden Shuba, Ibrahim Torore. They, they're on pace to graduate. What happens with those guys? Keep an eye on them. You have Caden Wallace, you know. Uh, is Salim, Salim's a fifth-year guy too, isn't he? A fourth or a fifth-year guy? A fifth I, mean, there's, guy. I think they have like seven or eight. Or it's it's a big number of fourth or fourth fifth or sixth year guys uh, coming out this year. So I, I just think this is going to be a year that we, that we really see uh, Penn State make a big push for offensive linemen, whether it's in the region or nationally. So we're going to go here with Imatep Zafir Stewart, uh, really good looking prospect, six four three twenty five. Uh, I think Zafir. I think this was Zafir's first year playing football. I think he came up to Penn State's camp. Uh, before he even really played and showed some signs that they liked. They really wanted to see the film, though. The film stacks up uh, from what we've seen so far. They, they, you, could, you can argue that he needs to maybe trim a little bit of weight. Uh, and I think 6'4 is a legit number. I think we, we'll, we'll see if get an updated number here uh, in the weeks and months ahead. But I, the one thing I'll say with Zafir, though, is he came up that final weekend. And one of the first people I talked to, you know, sources about was Zafir. And what they kind of hinted was he was kind of interested in potentially committing to Penn State right on the spot last weekend. Of course, the staff kind of gets him to hold off. Look, his family wasn't with him last weekend, and they really they don't like having guys jump on board without their family present for those visits. I think that was a big part of it. But uh, this is a player who has a lot of interest in Penn State. I think his only other visit that I know of right now was to Rutgers in January. Uh, so let's see how, how the board shakes up. He's got Boston College, Old Miss, uh, Pitt, Maryland, a few others out there. So the, uh, largely regional offers right now. But again, just another another player who seems to have a lot of interest in Penn State. Talk that he was interested in committing. So let's see where things go in the spring and summer. But uh, this is a player, again, with such a big class, uh, expected offensive line class, that I could potentially see them circling back on down the road. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big guy. Um, he's got uh, a lot of the tools that you look for. He's he's obviously raw as hell. I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. no question about it. Um, and uh, when it's one of those guys that you have to project when he gets into a little bit more structure, when he gets into uh, some coaching and things like that. Where does he stand? Um, but uh, there's a lot to like in, in an upside. But I think that it, I agree with the Penn State staff here. It's it's too early to to make that call. Um, he hasn't been anywhere. He's got some things to work on academically. Um, there's definitely a lot at play here in terms of more than just saying, okay, I want to commit. Okay, we're ready to take you. So um, that relationship is going to continue. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a guy that we really hadn't discussed all that much. But uh, Penn State's in in his eyes, I think Penn State's in a, in a tremendous spot right now. So we'll see what happens. Do they get him back to uh, to work him out this summer? Um, is that a guy that gets an official visit? We, we will see. As you mentioned, a bigger offensive line class. So you have more um, of an opportunity to, I guess, play, you know, just throw a wide net out there. They've, do they've done that, um, absolutely. But you're taking into account what the Armstrong twins, you're taking into account those other guys in Ohio. You're, you're trying to figure out is Stewart a tackle? Is he a guard? You've got Cooper cousins on board. You know, there's just so many things at play here in 2024 and you recruited that position so well in 2023 that you've got options now. And, and there's sort of momentum in that 2024 class uh, in the offensive line. So, you know, that's one of those things where you just gonna have to wait it out and see how things go. I would not be shocked if he picked up some more big offers uh, in March and April when coaches can go on the road once again and they see him work out and things like that. Cause I think there is a lot of good um, clay to work with there, but we'll see where Stewart come or is come the end of April and then uh, maybe try and figure out what he's, what, what he needs to do in camp season. Well, speaking of those other guys in Ohio, I thought you were going to mention him, but you didn't. So William Satterwhite is, is where we're going to finish this up uh, for our top seven or so guys. Picked. I put a pin for William last week. We, we we always try and keep it behind the paywall, but I know it always gets out there. So obviously a week from now, uh, we're, we're free to talk about it a little bit more publicly. Uh, 276 in the on 300, a four-star prospect. We have it 6'3", 295. I think he's more of an interior guy than a than a true tackle, uh, but, but we'll see how, of course, he grows. But uh, I'll just get right to it. 
I put a pick in because from what I've gathered, seems like the family is firmly in Penn State's corner here. Now, of course, I think more visits are going to come. So from that perspective, you can argue that maybe it's a tiny bit too early, but I, w- I wanted to see how that Alabama in- offer impacted him. Doesn't seem like that's given him much reason to to cool on Penn State or what his family thinks of Penn State. He's been to Michigan State, been to Kentucky, been to Ohio State, doesn't hold an Ohio State offer though. So that would be, of course, if, if, if a kid from Akron gets an Ohio State offer, that would uh, grab my attention to be something to look for. But right now, I think Penn State's firmly the team to beat here. He's very high on, on Penn State's board. And again, sounds like mom really likes the idea of him playing for James Franklin. Sean, what's your thoughts? I agree with you. We, we talked last month, actually coming out of that visit, that was that was a guy that you know you, you needed to watch. And I, I'm not sure that he's ready to make a decision anytime soon. Uh, he got a couple big offers at the end of January, but the good thing about those is he can't go anywhere in February if he wanted to. So like it's it, it's dead period. So that's not going to happen. So gives him more time to think about Penn State. He came up for I believe the Michigan State game at the end of the year. Um, and then was back on campus just about seven weeks later, I think it was, for the junior day. So that's uh, a good sign of interest, and I would not be shocked if he was back on campus in March. So I think Penn State in a good spot there. Um, Again, with Cooper Cousins on board, who you see as an interior guy, a center um, at the next level, I I think spots on the interior are at a premium. Always more interior guys or true interior guys on the board than true tackles. Um, But at the same time, Penn State really likes this guy a lot. And I could see him ending up in the class in the spring going into the summer. Before we wrap it up, Sean, any other names that I did not pick that you want to throw out there? I know we can, it's like a list of 250 guys. So this could take all day sorting through it. But does anybody that comes to mind? Uh, you know, I, I had this written down when we were talking about Higgins earlier, but Jalen Hornsby came in for a visit, and that was pretty quiet because it was that Sunday with Vabu Torre. Um, Hornsby was in. Uh, Terrence Moore from uh, from Tampa, uh, the receiver, was in. So it wasn't a junior day, but, you know, that's still an important, uh, an important day of visitors for Penn State. But Hornsby, I think, is a good player. Penn State offered him last May. Out of the Camden kids, uh, there's a lot of upside in in uh, in Hornsby, uh, you know, versus those other guys. So that's probably a guy that jumps out to me that I forgot to mention a little bit earlier. But yeah, there's, it, it's always funny to look back, and you and I have done this several times when you take a look at the list that you compile and things like that. And there's guys that you just flat out missed because you didn't know that they were on the board as high as they were. Or they maybe got an offer and you didn't really think about them too much at the time. Um, but uh, it's fascinating to get back and look in January and see some pretty good players have, uh, have come through here for, uh, for junior day visits and might be those guys that are on the incline there coming out of the, uh, coming out of the, the February dead period into the spring. One other guy too, before I end this real quick, Max LeBlanc, uh, tight end out of Tennessee. Just, I need to learn more about him. He's, he's, he, just, he seems to be emerging more and more schools offering. You know, we know Penn State's interest in guys like Carter Nelson in Nebraska, Brady Priestcorn in in Michigan. And, and let's see how those recruitments shape up first. But I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about Max LeBlanc more and more, you know, maybe going in the summer for an official visit or something like that. So just another guy that almost made my list, but I had to, I had to cut it off somewhere. So anything else, Sean? You good? I think I'm good, man. It's Super Bowl hangover show, so we got through it. And that's uh, that's the biggest (laughs) part about Super Bowl Monday. All right, guys. Well, appreciate you listening. Please subscribe. T. Frank says we're 25 away from 10,000. Please help us get there. Sean and I will be back next Monday. We'll see what we break down then. Hopefully there's some news to talk about this week. We'll talk to you soon.